Hello, this is the trade site U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview for Thursday, July 31st, 2014. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal11. If you find the information in this video useful, please like us on YouTube. Well, here's the updated S&P. This is the ES Futures contract, but nevertheless, the S&P daily chart after the last day or two, nothing's changed. We continue to be in a 40-point range for all of July uh, with one, two sweeps of the lows, one sweep of the highs. Other than that, really in about a 20-point range for July, which is pretty light and miserable. Not completely uncommon for summer trading, of course, uh, but it doesn't get us anything in terms of big moves intraday in the stock market. So uh, we are, well, what are we looking for here for tomorrow? Let's start with that. Uh, we just had a two-day Fed meeting. We just had the first look at gross domestic product for the second quarter. Neither one did much to the market. I'll show you in a minute where the market closed for this session. It's quite amusing. Uh, so what do we expect on Thursday? Well, first of all, we do have some economic data that's coming out on Thursday. And let me show you what that looks like uh, really quickly here. Scroll down and take a look at July 31st. Challenger job cuts, 7.30 a.m. Eastern time. Not a big deal. The weekly initial and continuing jobless claims data along with the employment cost index, 8.30 a.m. Chicago PMI, 15 minutes into the market. Natural gas inventories, an hour in. By the way, Friday's got a lot of data, just so you're aware that that's coming. Uh, because we might get some excitement at least Friday morning off of, look at all this data that's coming out on Friday. So be aware of that. But in terms of data on Thursday, there are a couple of data points. Uh, we are beyond the GDP and the, and the Fed, so that's usually a good thing. Uh, but this still is the summer, and this is the last day of the month. So this is, to the extent that you always have monthly, some minor what we call window dressing issues, meaning the funds have already got their stocks about where they want them for the statements to print for the end of the month. Obviously, that's a bigger deal at the end of the quarter, end of the year, but it still is a minor role every month. And so therefore, in July, which is the summer month, which is typically slow, a lot of slow trading days, it's hard to imagine you're going to stray far on the last day of the month. So just keep that in mind. Um, in terms of Friday, obviously, usually summer Fridays are slow, but we'll be beyond the statements printing and a lot of data coming out. So again, we start by focusing on the first 90 minutes to an hour play as usual and go from there. Here's a look at the NASDAQ 100 index, uh, up a little bit today, gained a couple of points, actually gained 17 points. By the way, the S&P was up 0.12, so not even a point for the session. Uh, I don't know that you can define boredom any other way. Uh, here's a look, by the way, at the S&P futures contract. And what I want to do here real quick is I want to uh, insert our VWAP tool. Usually it's on the chart, so it's just not usually on this one for me. Uh, but I want you to see it's the purple line. And as you can see, this is a, these are five-minute bars. So you're seeing basically most of Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, and today, Thursday. And you can see the uh, purple line. We closed, not only did we close barely up for the session, uh, closing almost exactly where we were Wednesday, but right on the VWAP. That's despite the big gap up, then the solid move down, then the spike on the Fed number, then the retracement of that, and all that we ended up right on the VWAP. We didn't even end up on the VWAP Tuesday or Wednesday, but we ended up on the VWAP, which is the volume weighted average price on what could have been the most interesting the day so far this week with a bunch of key numbers coming out in the Fed reporting. So that kind of tells you what summer looks like and feels like. So we'll have to be aware of that. Uh, moving forward. Uh, where did uh, crude oil close? This is also interesting. I'll put the daily charts back up. Crude oil back on a red static trend line that's been in place since May. We bounced off of it once. Uh, interesting to be near the lows of the last several months here in July. It doesn't happen much. You're entering core hurricane season. Still got some hot months ahead. And uh, it's interesting to be retreating this point in the year, especially with everything going on in, in Israel and in, in the Ukraine. Uh, a lot of uncertainty about oil supplies, and yet prices are retracing. Uh, SOX, the semiconductors, held up today. Again, I think we've got to watch this one uh, just because it's been so weak, and it does tend to lead the NASDAQ. Uh, biotechs were up, though, also a leader in the NASDAQ. So, um, you know, SOX and bios may cancel each other out, and the NASDAQ uh, may go nowhere net if the bios keep heading up. This is a nice cup and handle for me here on the NBI. Uh, I'm going to make a separate video today to talk about some of the stuff that happened in the markets today in terms of our trading. Um, but we're still watching a couple of stocks that we've been watching for the last several days, like this BCRX looking for a breakout here. Beautiful cup and handle pattern 
um, this one and uh, a couple of others uh, which we'll be looking at intraday during the room tomorrow uh, but again I think the focus is again temper you yeah, had temporary expectations a little bit we are past the Fed you know a lot of times if you if you got through a two-day Fed meeting and especially through the GDP number uh, you'd, you'd expect that the market would be a little more free to move right now but I think end of month in July unfortunately falling on a Thursday which then leaves a Friday, a summer Friday, um, doesn't bode well for a lot of excitement the next two days. But, you know, we've gotten enough movement in the first two hours to get something done uh, every day this week. We did get something done in the afternoon on Tuesday. So anything is possible. So we, sorry for the alerts. The market is moving right now. This is Forex stuff moving. Uh, if we will be in the lab calling it for whatever we can find. Uh, Martin Rich remains on vacation, so I'll continue to do these market previews. Uh, until he gets back after next week or sometime late next week and uh, summer will end markets usually get back to a little more activity uh, later in August and then September gets good October through April being the best months of the year from a trading perspective so we're, we're, we're on the verge of getting out of this summer stuff uh, but it certainly has been flat across the board in all the markets futures have been slow Forex has been slow stocks have been okay uh, but you really have to understand what you're looking for on the stock mm -hmm. side and not over trade in this mm -hmm. environment. Have a great trading session.